Look at me. I'm obviously three-dimensional. Well, actually, I'm currently a two-dimensional representation of my 3D self, playing out on the flat screen of your phone or your computer. But what if our world is just a three-dimensional representation of a higher dimensional reality? Things that we don't see doesn't mean they don't exist. And in fact, there can be extra dimensions of space that are just beyond things that we've actually observed. For whatever reason, it might be that light with which we use to see things doesn't travel in those dimensions. It might be those dimensions are just so tiny, they're inaccessible to us. It could be they're warped in a way that they're inaccessible. There's many different reasons, or several different reasons, I should say, why we would not have directly seen them. Now, why would you think about it if you can't observe it? Well, there is a chance that there could be observable consequences. We're back to 2D me, and there's a circle growing bigger and smaller right next to me. But if we rotate this 2D world around the third dimension, we can see it's just a 3D sphere traveling through my 2D world. This higher dimensional object has an observable effect in my flat world. Even though we can't observe it all at once, there are ways to put together all that information. And of course, mathematically, and we can think about more abstractly what's going on in extra dimensions, even without being able to completely visualize it. And there are some really tough problems in particle physics that people have worked really hard on for years that we have not come to a solution for. And one of the possibilities is that these extra dimensions play a role. And if they do play a role, then they potentially have observable consequences. If there were other dimensions of space, it could result in particles having added constraints or freedoms that we can't fathom in our 3D world. Or maybe gravity having different strengths along these extra dimensions. All this could help explain some mind-bending things about our universe that we still don't fully understand. From the nature of dark matter, to the behavior of black holes, or even why the Higgs boson is the mass that it is. Some of the physicists, uh, namely string theorists, they come up with uh, theories which try to explain some of the discrepancies between quantum mechanics and gravity, called quantum gravity theories, by saying that particles are not made out of points, they're made out of little bits of string. But it turns out that those theories only usually work if there are not three space dimensions, but uh, usually nine dimensions of space, or even ten dimensions of space, but still just one dimension of time. So then your space-time becomes, instead of what we say 3 plus 1, so 3 space and 1 time, it could become 9 plus 1 or 10 plus 1, so 10 space and 1 time. In order for string theory to work properly, it has to have these extra space dimensions. Uh, and then you have to ask yourself, well, why do people like string theory so much? And the answer to that is that it solves a lot of the problems that we get when we try to unify quantum mechanics and, and Einstein's theory of gravity. And not a lot of theories can do that. So it holds tremendous promise. So much promise that people are willing to consider that these extra dimensions might exist. In other words, extra dimensions allow us to think about these big unknowns in new ways, with some super clever maths. It's like saying, you know, my, my living room isn't working for a theater, so let's get a stage. It doesn't automatically give you a show. You have to figure out how to use the stage to actually create something interesting. So in the context of the stage, which is the extra-dimensional universe, we sometimes can find um, new ideas that would not have worked in the context of only three dimensions of space.